Okay, because tonight sleeping is not really an option for me. Um, yeah, someone is having a party and I've been up since like 6 a.m. and it's now uh, midnight. So I've been up for 18 hours and well, the party is still going because they slept till afternoon. So you know, yeah, I'm fucked and I can't sleep because it's next door and it's loud and blah. Anyway news uh the driver for uh my beloved uh washing machine motor is here um this is a very strange piece of tech i'll disassemble the case and we'll take a closer look. okay so um circuit board base which has clip-ons for a panel with some built-in spring thing um so the circuit board okay what do we have here let's look at the inputs so l n line neutral that's 230 volts or 220 it says 220 i think we have 230 here um f1 f2 according to the manual which was in there in chinese and i had to translate using the google translate app uh, it says excitation coil which in our case uh, would be, I think, orange and brown or green. At least these three wires are the excitation coils. The problem is our excitation coil is, has one ohm of resistance. And the F1, F2, that's DC. That comes straight out of the rectifier. So power goes in through the fuse into the rectifier and then to the rest of the system. Um, Directly to the rec from the rectifier, uh, we get F1 and F2, and then we have the rest of this. So we have a little transformer, uh, 220 volts down to 12 volts AC, a discrete rectifier here for apparently the voltage here for the uh, chip. A um, what does it say? Uh, apparently there should be a L7810, which would be a 10 volt regulator. Uh, but there's something completely different in there, but I guess it's a 10 volt regulator just with a different label. So 10 volts because these MOSFETs probably need 10 volts of switching voltage. Uh, the 12 volt is getting in here and yeah, anyway, that's the power supply of the, the chip. The chip is doing the switching of these MOSFETs. Um, those are in parallel. Uh, so what it does is we have a stable, well, stable supply of, um, let me take this screwdriver for pointing off my fat fingers uh, so we have a stable supply for the chip of 10 volts <coughs> um, uh, doesn't look like well there's a little q1 i don't know what that does that's a little transistor um, we have an led i don't know where that is driven but probably directly from chip otherwise the q would be somewhere here uh, there's another transistor here which might be the mosfet driver I don't know. I haven't analyzed it that thoroughly, um, but anyway, so we have this thing, which is a is connected to a minus a plus, which is the output to the motor. Um, so this, I guess, provides signal feedback to the chip <coughs> for whatever reason ever, because uh, this should just be a PWM. Um, anyway, so yeah, we have two MOSFETs in parallel, so this is just switching on and off um, our power directly out of the rectifier. You see there's no big uh, cap that stores the energy, um, I guess mostly because we have a big inductive load which would just suck out all the power out of the um, cap before it gets recharged in the next cycle, especially for bigger motors. This is for, well this is 10 amps to 1200 watts um, so yeah we just put it directly out from this thing something else it says um, oh yeah it even says on here output DC 0 to 220 volts input 220 volts that's not entirely correct um, the output would be the DC max uh, would be uh, the root of 2 times the input voltage. In our case, that's 230 volts AC input, so 340 volts uh, ish DC output at A minus A and A plus. Um, I think A minus is directly connected to F1, which directly goes to line through the rectifier. Then you have this F2 is directly to the rectifier, and A plus goes through the MOSFETs. And we have this big 
super big diode. Um, that's the flyback diode protecting the MOSFETs from flyback from the uh, <coughs> induction of the coil. I don't know what these components here do. Um, no a clue. Like I couldn't figure it out. I don't know what to do, but they look important. Um, exactly. Now this one I also don't know what it does. Uh, anyway, so what we have here for the other inputs NC not connected. Then we have 10 volts here on the left. Okay, that proves our 10 volt input voltage, and our ground on the right. And then we have a signal for a pot that says 4.7 kilo ohms. Um, the pot that was in the box has 22. Should work though, because this just uh, it. I mean it, it calls for a two watt pot, so uh, I don't know. Um, I just guess that the one that was in the package also works. <coughs> um, not very sure, but should. Didn't try it yet. Um, I have to try it, see what the output of uh, A minus A plus does. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be really dangerous because I have to uh, put that through some high resistors, have a voltage divider thing. Uh, yeah, so anyway, at least we know it's polarized, so A minus is definitely ground, so I should not have any issues. And if I do, um, actually, I think I'm just gonna drive it with the Variac, so uh, it's isolated. <coughs> the Variac is basically acting as an isolation transformer, and isolation transformer is just a one to one transformer um, that, well, isolates, and a Variac is also a transformer, so. You can put it to one to one ratio and that's it. Um, but yeah, so A minus A plus, it would in our case go to the armature, which is uh, these two wires here, uh, going to the brushes and then to the armature. <coughs> um, now, this is a rather complex circuit board. Rectifier, PWM switch thingy, uh, blah blah and the output you get on a minus a plus it's i think what was it 16 kilohertz frequency i think it said so you get our uh sinus well our uh, rectified sinus wave which would be just waves up down up down um that's chopped into 16 kilohertz bits and those kind of make their way to the motor now um <coughs> Now 16 kilohertz is certainly better than uh, lower frequencies, but you still will be able to hear it, I guess. I was hoping I could get it in 20 kilohertz or more, but yeah, maybe I can change that with the pot. Who knows? <coughs> it doesn't say in the uh, instruction because it's mostly Chinese and I can't really read that. Um, so yeah, I'll try that uh, using the Variac. And an alternative to this would be to just have the um, have a phase AC phase chopper thingy phase controller is uh, the word I'm searching for, and then rectify that and put that into the coil. Now I cannot use F1 and F2 because this would put 340 volts DC directly onto a one ohm inductive load. That that's not good. So <laughs> yeah, that that would just instantly break the fuse, and that's it. Um, so this is probably made for entirely different motors, but I thought I need some PWM controller that goes to at least 100 volts. If I want less uh, total throughput, um, there's no inductor here. Maybe that's an inductor. Could it be an inductor? Nah, it has four, four pins, so not an inductor transformer. Um, so yeah, with the AC phase chopper we would just have 60 hertz chopping. Um, which would be rather noisy, but would be much simpler than this. And here we have our approximated uh, DC. Uh, so, yes, I probably forgot what I just wanted to say, but I'm fucking tired. And I figured I used the time that I'm still awake, or have to be awake, and make a quick update video on this. Okay, bye.